What is a good example of something that is counterintuitive? During World War II, statistician Abraham Wald was asked to help the British decide where to add armor to their bombers. After analyzing the records, he recommended adding more armor to the places where there was no damage. The RAF was initially confused. Wald had data only on the planes that returned to Britain so the bullet holes that Wald saw were all in places where a plane could be hit and still survive. The planes that were shot down were probably hit in different places than those that returned so Wald recommended adding armor to the places where the surviving planes were lucky enough not to have been hit. Something similar happened with helmets. Once helmets were being issued to soldiers the rates of head injuries went way up. Took someone far too long to realize that without the helmet there were less injuries because there were more fatalities. I know of a couple who had puppies to give away and no takers. They changed the ad in the paper to read free puppies. Five cute one ugly. They were all adopted the next day by people coming to get the poor ugly puppy. Can confirm. Went to see some kittens a lady had. The mama had 10 kittens in pairs. For example, 2 orange, 2 grey, 2 black, etc. I liked her the grey tom and the lady goes, yeah, he's cute. Too bad his sister, referring to the grey female, is ugly. Nobody wants her, yeah, I left with 2 kittens. I remember reading once about something today referred to as cobra economics, it's when you try to do something beneficial and end up causing more harm. It started in the 1800s when Britain was in control of India. They had a huge problem with the cobras all over the place accidentally biting people and just being a pain in the butt. They fought the cobra problem by saying that they would pay anyone who brought them a dead cobra zero dollars and two cents. Since India was very poor people would hunt these cobras all day and show up with wagon fulls. There was a problem though. The cobra population wasn't decreasing. When the British started raiding homes they found out that since everyone was so poor, it was actually more lucrative to raise cobras in their basement and then slaughter them for a salary. This understandably pee off the British so they ended the dead cobra purchasing program. So now you have a bunch of guys with basements full of valueless cobras, so they released them into the street. Overall Britain tried to kill off the cobras, but actually ended up having vastly more cobras on the street. I once read a story about someone who was looking to get rid of an old television set that they didn't want anymore so they put it out by the curb with a sign that said free TV. People would walk by, give it a quick glance, and keep on walking. What is going on here? Don't people want a free TV? The guy asking himself. Then, he had a brilliant idea. He changed the sign to say, TV $20 or best offer. Inquire inside. It was stolen within a minute. What's counterintuitive? Sometimes free isn't the best deal you can get. Because who would give away a working TV? If it's free there must be something wrong with it. By assigning a value to it, it might still be good. I read somewhere that in order to get someone to like you, you need to ask them to do something nice for you, not the other way around. Ben Franklin was also of the same opinion. This actually works. The landlord and I pee each other off and when we needed to text each other it was straightforward with no extra kindness, actually a bit of rudeness. I asked her if my family could borrow her set of professional snorkel gear for our camping trip that starts Monday. She started texting smileys and sending nice comments. I picked up the gear a couple days ago. I am thinking of a nice thank you gift to get her upon return. If you notice you are retaining water, you might think that the solution is to drink less water. But actually, drinking more water ends water retention. Seems counterintuitive if you only notice the retention and not the reasoning behind it. Could you explain? I recently had a physiology class this past spring and summer has been hammering on my memory colon. I think it has to do with salts and how osmosis drags the water into the interstitial fluid outside of your vessels, thus creating the imbalance. With water intake increasing, the water will pull back into the vessels? Greater car safety, anything that makes drivers feel safe driving faster, puts people in danger, because pedestrians, harder helmets can put football players in danger, because they allow harder hits and do nothing for concussions. Boxing gloves make boxing more dangerous for similar reasons. This is why Jeremy Clarkson's theory for road safety is as brilliant if attached to the steering wheel of all vehicles was a large spike nobody would ever crash because we would all be driving so dang carefully. Purchase orders at work. 
$75 for a piece of software or some kind of thingy we need for day to day operation? Finance turn into rabbit dogs and only say no. If we take it to the CEO for signature, he says why do we need this? What is it? I don't understand. And more often than not, he just says go figure it out. Don't bother me. Show up with an order for $75,000 for a whole pile of unrelated things. Calling it 6 month supply catch up. Including a few big ticket items. And finance wills I.O. This is serious and the boss will say do we need it? Look me in the face and tell me we need it. Okay. You win. Approved. Sorry. Must vent. I worked at a warehouse where, rather than pay for decent inventory software which they could easily afford, they had some crappy glitchy software that would spontaneously add hundreds or thousands of a certain item to stock. We'd then get tons of orders for non-existent items. Back orders got backed up to the point that management made us ship incomplete orders. We sold mostly swimwear. Women's two-piece bathing suits are sold separately. We were shipping some people half a bathing suit. I actually went into the manager's office to tell him half a bathing suit is worth none of a bathing suit and who wants to pay $6 shipping for an incomplete bathing suit anyway. I later found out our software techs were in Vietnam randomly. We are in the US. Here's my favorite one. Imagine a rigid wire tightly wrapped around the earth. Assume the earth is a perfect sphere. It is wrapped so tightly nothing can get beneath it. It is essentially hugging the earth. Cut the wire and weld in an extra section 1 meter in length. 3 FT for you Americans. As the wire is now longer than the earth's circumference it will pop off the ground by a small way. Around the whole earth? How high do you think this wire will sit? High enough for an air molecule to slide beneath? How about a sheet of paper? Nope. The wire would sit about 16 centimeters, 6 inches, above the earth, the whole way around the globe. You're right but that's not the whole story. Let's try the same thing with an orange, or any other sphere for that matter. We add the exact same length as before but start out much smaller. What do you think will be the gap between the orange and the longer wire? Turns out it will have the exact same distance as before, about 16 centimeters. Jealousy. The motivator for that behavior is that you want to keep your partner, but more often than not jealousy will actually have the opposite effect and make them break up with you. I get jealous, but I'm too cool to admit it. When the fellas talk to my girl I ain't with it. It's a Greek legend, but some say it's true. According to legend, although Cappadistrius ordered that potatoes be handed out to anyone interested, the population was reluctant at first to take advantage of the offer. The legend continues, that he then ordered that the whole shipment of potatoes be unloaded on public display on the docks of Nathplion, and placed it under guard to make the people believe that they were valuable. Soon, people would gather to look at the guarded potatoes and some started to steal them. The guards had been ordered in advance to turn a blind eye to such behavior, and soon the potatoes had all been stolen and Cappadistrius plan to introduce them to Greece had succeeded. 1 billion is larger than you might imagine. You might think, a thousand million, doesn't sound that big. But think this way, a million seconds is 11 days, close to a fortnight. A billion seconds is over 31 years, that's half a lifetime. A billion dollars is mad money. Or maybe it also goes to show how our lifetimes are shorter than we might imagine? 7 billion people on earth, and counting. Free MMORPGs, they're fun to play in beta. But they'll never be a major contender if you don't charge. I read an article once that hit the nail on the head. If people pay even a minuscule fee, they're more invested, financially and emotionally, and will tend to take advantage of that investment. A one-time purchase charge doesn't qualify. If they never have to make a repeating investment, they'll play it for about the amount of time they feel they've paid for, and lose interest. If they pay a recurring fee, they continue to feel invested and feel a responsibility to themselves to get what they paid for. This is one major reason World of Warcraft has survived as long as it has, and continues to be the go-to as people lose interest in all the other MMORPGs they play. Aeon and Guild Wars 2 are just two excellent examples. They both had other issues that caused them to lose high-level players, but to some degree those players lost interest in even trying to overcome the flaws because they didn't feel invested financially. Riding motorcycles and bikes, you actually steer the handlebars into the opposite direction of the turn. 
That is, you steer the handlebars right to turn left. When creating a distraction, put the big end of the celery in your butt before strutting around. It's less likely to fall out. Also explains why your celery tastes like crap. Having money in savings when you also have debt. The amount you pay in interest will always be more than you earn in savings. Pay off your debt first, you are losing money otherwise. I've always thought it interesting that when you go through the self-checkout lines at a grocery store, the faster and sloppier you try to scan a barcode, the more often it works. This is why I drink before my cashier job. Percentages. They seem obvious, but most people don't understand them that well. For example, suppose a stock rises by 50% on Monday, and then decreases by 50% on Tuesday. Is the stock's value back to where it started? No. It's now worth less than it was in the first place. If this happened again and again and again, its price rising by 50% and then dropping by 50% every other day, its value would eventually shrink to zero. Each up-down cycle reduces the original value by 25%. I don't think that's counterintuitive. If you think about it for longer than 5 seconds it's very obvious. If caught in the jaws of a boa constrictor, push your caught limb into the direction of its throat as someone else holds open its jaws because the teeth are angled inward. That is, of course, if you have someone around you strong enough to hold open its jaws. I only know this from watching a show on TV. No experience in this, thankfully. Veblen goods are a good example of something that is counterintuitive. Veblen goods are goods for which the quantity demanded goes up as price goes up, which you wouldn't expect since price going up should make people want to buy less of a thing. Americans hate politicians yet when one comes to speak in our neighborhood, we turn out in droves to listen to their lies. Case in point, I grew up in a staunchly Republican part of Indiana and in 20 years I had never heard a kind word said about Hillary Clinton. But when she planned to give a speech in my hometown during the 2008 election, the whole city was a buzz for a week. Her appearance dominated all the newscasts and people camped out overnight to hear an 8pm speech the next day. Republicans are red, Democrats are blue. Neither one gives a frick about you. Making your freaking bed, since you'll eventually sleep in it anyways and frick that crap up. Fricking OCDM. To effectively lose body fat, one's diet that most of the calories consumed should come from fats, followed by proteins and a minute amount of complex carbs to keep blood sugar stable. You're changing how your body stores and metabolizes fat. In effect you're making the body see it as an energy source to be utilized rather than stored and hoarded. Fluid flow through a pipe. The pressure actually increases when the fluid flows through an area of the pipe with a larger cross section, and decreases when it flows through a smaller cross sectional area. Lighter roasted coffee has more caffeine total. I don't know why that's counterintuitive to people, though. How would roasting add caffeine? Of course, darker roasts have more caffeine by weight. The way our memory and decision making is made. Each time you recall a memory, you are actively recreating it. It's not like retrieving a file from a computer. In addition to that we think things are more likely if we have more memories of that thing happening. Which seems like a worse disaster. Car crash or plane wreck. Which is more likely to happen to you? Which one are you actually worried about? Raising taxes might not have a positive net effect on public finances. In fact the effect might be negative depending on the current tax burden. A lot of people have a very very difficult time grasping this context. Maybe because it is counterintuitive and maybe because they just don't want it out of political reasons. It's really not more counterintuitive than a store losing profit from raising prices. If you cross the outer edge of the universe you're still in the universe. The universe is theorized to be in an impossible to conceive shape. One where if you somehow escape through one side of it you just end up on the opposite side. Slurry is counterintuitive if you don't know how flour works. It used to confuse the heck out of me as a kid. You're adding a liquid to thicken the gravy, but it's a liquid. The navigation in BMWs. You turn the dial to the right to zoom out and to the left to zoom in. To visualize, this is the opposite of how a screw works. You need an established credit history in order to get approved for a reasonable loan credit card. 
Which is the only real way to build credit, unless you buy into the system young, it's a pain in the butt to fix it later. Buying a car, putting half down, 10k, want a loan for the rest 14% interest or get a casina, I want to buy a very reasonable house, have ample income to support the loan, and list liquid assets near the value of the loan on the application, to bad, insufficient credit history, happened this week, and that's with a 690 credit score from 1 year of a co-signed auto loan and 4 months of a $1k limit cash backed credit card that was all I could get approved for, yes, I am a little bitter about it. I got another one, supersonic flight, the faster you go, the less drag you experience and the more fuel efficient flight gets, see the oft posted SR-71 Blackbird, its top fuel efficiency was its top speed and the only thing limiting its speed was heat, they would have to stop going faster because of thermal limits, not because they had no power or fuel, if the materials had let them go faster, they would have gone faster and been even more fuel efficient. Cancer cells do not divide faster than normal cells. The main difference is that normal differentiated cells are quiescent, but cancer cells still divide in an uncontrolled fashion. Even senior scientists I work with make this mistake when they describe cancer. Using disinfectant on everything in your house. Like in the commercials, the mom's got a bucket of bleach and is washing off all her kids toys. If you do that, the kids immune systems, and your own, won't be as strong. So, by killing all the germs in your house, you're actually making it easier for you to get sick. I could be wrong about this one, but that's what I take from it. Here's a list of counterintuitive things from game theory. People often take aggressive postures that lead to mutually bad outcomes even though mutual cooperation is mutually preferable. Even if everyone agrees that an outcome is everyone's favorite, they might not get that outcome. Sometimes having fewer options is better than having more options. On a penalty kick, soccer players should kick more frequently toward their weaker side as their weaker side becomes increasingly inaccurate. In a duel, both gunslingers should shoot at the same time. Even if one is a worse shot and would seem to benefit by walking closer to his target, there's a reason why gas stations are on the same corner and politicians adopt very similar platforms. And it's the same reason. Closing roads can improve everyone's commute time. Fewer witnesses to a crime might be preferable to more. You should bid how much you value the good at stake in a second price auction. If you pay the value you think something is worth, you are going to end up with a negative net profit. Lighting money on fire is often profitable. Going to college can be valuable even if college doesn't teach you anything. An animal might be better off jumping high in the air repeatedly than running away from a predator. But knowing just slightly more about the value of your car than a potential buyer can make it impossible to sell it. Nigerian email scammers should say they are from Nigeria even though just about everyone is familiar with the scam. Everyone might mimic everyone else just because two people chose to do the same thing. A biased media may be better than an unbiased media. Every voting system is manipulable. You might want to abstain from voting even though you strictly prefer one candidate to another. Unanimous jury rulings are more likely to convict the innocent than simple majority rule if jurors vote intelligently. The House of Representatives caters to the median member of the majority party, not the median member of the institution overall. Plurality voting leads to two-party systems. United Nations Security Council members sometimes do not veto resolutions even though they strongly dislike them. Without the ability to propose offers, you receive very few benefits from bargaining. Settlements always exist that are mutually preferable to war. Fighting wars removes the need for war. You might want to shoot to miss in war. Non-proliferation agreements can be credible. Weapons inspections are useful even if they never find anything. Economic sanctions are useful even though they often fail in application. Pitchers shouldn't change their pitch selection with a runner on third base, even though curveballs are more likely to result in wild pitches. Sports teams can benefit from a lack of player safety in contract negotiations. You shouldn't try to maximize your score in words with friends scrabble. In speed sailing, competitors deliberately choose paths they believe will be slower. The first player wins in connect 4. Checkers ends in a draw. Chess has a solution, though we don't know it yet, or maybe not. Warren Buffett was never going to pay $1 billion the winner of the March Madness Bracket Challenge. Park Place is worthless in McDonald's Monopoly. 
losing pays. As drug tests become more accurate, they should be implemented less often. When you play soccer you tend to have a direction you prefer kicking to. It's easier to explain with tennis, some people just naturally prefer to play their forehands cross court whereas others find it easier to play forehands down the line. Same thing is applied in soccer where some find it more natural to kick across the body and others find it easier to kick away from the body with an open foot. I think the inaccuracy allows for natural variation in your penalties which makes it harder for the goalie to save it, not 100% sure though. The unexpected hanging paradox. A judge sentences a prisoner to be hanged at 12 noon one day next week, Monday through Friday. The execution will be a surprise to the prisoner, that is, the prisoner will not be able to deduce the day of the execution until he is actually taken away at noon on the day of, so the prisoner goes back to his cell and starts to reason. It can't be Friday of course, because if he's still alive Thursday, he knows it'll be Friday, and thus, not a surprise. This leaves Monday Thursday, now, it can't be Thursday, either. If Wednesday goes by, and he's still alive, he would know the execution date would be Thursday, since Friday is out, thus it wouldn't be a surprise. Now it's down to Monday Wednesday, it can't be Wednesday either, because if Tuesday goes by and he's still alive, he'd know it has to be Wednesday, since by the logic before, it can't be Thursday, if it was, it wouldn't be a surprise, thus, since it wouldn't be a surprise, Wednesday's out too. Now it's down to either Monday or Tuesday. Using the same reasoning as before, it can't be Tuesday, since if Monday goes by and he's still alive, he'd know it'd be Tuesday, since it can't be Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. With only Monday left, it obviously can't be a surprise because it's only one option. So the prisoner goes to bed and is comforted by the fact that according to his reasoning, he cannot be executed on any day. Then on Tuesday at noon, he hears a knock on the door. It's the executioner. He says surprise motherfucker. And contrary to the prisoner's reasoning, it was actually a surprise. Motherfucker. I read a variation of this in sideways stories from wayside school as a kid and never realized until now that it was referencing this paradox. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.